Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is an AEG Electrolux 16830 washing machine. It's a lava mat turbo. It's in a state of disassembly because I was attempting to find out what was wrong with it. I've traced the problem down to the PCB. A couple of blown out diodes, I think, on the PCB there. Just here at my fingertip. And there's a couple of traces blown on the back as well. I could get a new one, this machine's never going to be worth fixing. That's just where we stand in the UK at the moment. I might eat my words in a few years when the world runs out of washing machines. But for now, the sensible thing to do is to take this apart, get any good spares I can from it, any useful parts, screws, whatnot, then split all the metals out into different types for recycling. I'm going to keep the motor control board. I've looked at that in a previous video. Don't know how it works, but I have a feeling in the future I might be able to get it to work. That's a three-phase motor. I'll take that apart and have a quick look at that. And then just scrap the rest of it or recycle it as the other way of describing it so without further ado let's get into it i've already taken off the front front uh, fascia so there isn't much more to do there other than unclip the cables let's get them off should probably put gloves on to save my hands where are we so in the style of e-waste ben Perhaps this will be a scrap marathon video where I will go through most of the detail from this point on of taking this machine apart. What I'm trying to do is, you know, take it apart to the point where it can be recycled quite efficiently. I could just bring this to my local tip and throw it in with the appliances for recycling and somebody else will do this. Um, or I can bring it to a local metal merchant where they will give me money for it albeit very little probably somewhere between three and three and four quid maybe i reckon at the moment for the weight of a washing machine okay there's the button cluster now i recently bought a button cluster from the internet for a tumble an aeg tumble dryer so this has a value in itself but i don't know if it works and that's what you're up against with this kind of thing now i don't know if this works i don't know if this well i know that this one probably doesn't work where does that get me so I'll set those aside. They'll be recycled with e-waste. There's another board on the back I'm going to keep. This is all plastic. It'll go with the soap drawer and everything else. That It can't really be recycled at the moment in the UK. It just tends to go with general non-recyclable waste. I'm looking for some buckets, that's what I'm looking for, to throw these things in. And you'll see how much plastic comes out of this, it's a bit of a disgrace really, but it's just how it goes. I'll leave my little screw pot there and then I'm going to get a couple of socket drivers here and take out as many of these screws as I can see because it's all coming apart it doesn't have to go back together there's no particular order on it and uh, yes the point that I'll make to you now and that you've heard before is it would be faster using a screwdriver an electric screwdriver but that's not how I'm going to do it because it just puts a lot of noise on a video and it's just as noisy for me to listen to and I don't really want to listen to it. So I'm not going to. So let's get a bit more of a view there. I'm taking off screws and you can't see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm just at the moment generally taking off what I can see. Over here. They don't come off for some reason. Too, too big. These are the screws that hold on the motor that drives the fan on the tumble dryer. Okay, so we'll get that belt off. Now we're getting in there. Hopefully this will just wiggle out. No, something else is holding on. I don't know what. I'll come back to that. 
this machine's an interesting one because it's got back panels that come off so you can get access to most of the stuff in it from the back. And I already have that off because I was working on the motor behind before. So screws can be recycled as metal, but in reality I'll probably put them in my big box of handy screws. Because they do come in handy periodically. Amazing how many different fasteners they can use making one type of thing. Some earth cables screwed on there. The washer and a nut. Nice brass nut. If you're setting brass aside separately, that's where it would go. been watching some videos recently by a guy called e-waste ben and he does these epic scrap marathons and i unless you've got a particular thing you're interested in i find that they're very long and i'm hoping i won't be that long today but you never know this is just real life what i'm hoping to get to really is the drum in the center because they make a useful fire pit and that's in terms of up upcycling and recycling that's the best bit in the past and i haven't done it in the last few years uh, i've attempted to save some of the parts that I know to be working that I can test, like pumps and fans and stuff like that. And I've put up videos about how to test fans and things in the past. It's not worth the hassle selling them because as soon as, uh, what I've noticed recently is as soon as you have any issue online, eBay at the moment sides with the buyer. And so the seller has to pay two times the postage and gets nothing in return. And so that's kind of where you're up to then. So there's a, that's a kind of a useful little motor now. I've got to say, quite heavy. It's a little straight up 230 volt, 50 hertz, 75 watt motor. Drives a pulley and has a fan to keep itself cool. I think it's a shaded pole induction motor. They're a really inefficient type of motor in that, you know, they use 75 watts, but they're probably only I don't know 10% of that I think is useful energy but it doesn't matter because they're never driving something very heavy and the way energy works in the developed world and pretty much all the world is that we've got so much of it that you save money on the big things like heating water by heating less water and you forget about that kind of stuff which is in some ways nonsense but that's just how it is right what's coming off next what can we get off next A lot of wires holding things together, so I'm gonna to have to start clipping cable ties. The cable ties, I think, are one of the silliest things of our time because they're effectively single use. I was working on a higher washing machine recently, and it had instead of cable ties, like metal twisties, wire twisties. And I thought that it was kind of wonderful that it was using them because to put them on, it's not necessarily more work. I don't know that it is more work really. Oh dear. Selection of different kinds of clips here makes my life difficult. There is your mains filter, which is a handy thing to keep if you're working on motors. This one to get it out is a bit of a tab here. Bit of a disaster actually because this one only slots in in a certain way. And on this one, I'm going to cut the wires because that shows me which way it's wired. Now, where I recycle metal, they won't take plugs on wires, or they, they will take them, but they'll charge you more for it. So, plugs have to go separately to wire. So, you've got to chop off all the plugs clips on the ends otherwise they'll give you a lower price and that 
is way less than half. So for the sake, depends on the type of wire, of course, but for the sake of chopping off, I don't know, in this case, probably around 50, 50 plugs, it's worth it. So now there's the element of, the plugs off the end of the element on the tumble dryer. Sometimes if the wires have uh, what I would call useful plugs on them, like if they were just a straightforward spade connector, I would try and use it again on uh, hot wiring a motor for washing machine destruction. But in this case, we're not gonna get there. So now they've very kindly used a safety fastener there it's the torx one but it's got a little nub in the center and i'm going to recycle the metal there's a bit of brass in there i can't be bothered i'm just going to cut it off which is a shame it's not worth my while getting it out of the cupboard the right uh, screwdriver bit just cut that cord This solenoid inlet off. Doesn't want to come. There we go. A bit of water in this. Now, loads more plugs on that. This is going straight in with metal recycling. It can go as it's called light iron or so they call light iron here but sometimes you hear people in America calling it tin shred stuff like that. So that's what it is. Even though there's a lot of plastic there's also other stuff so it can be shredded up into I don't know what pressing steel is the other one that you hear it called. Right cable ties Go. So now that was the connector, not the connector, contactor, I guess you'd call it. It's not a contactor, selector switch for the selector switch for the mains and whatnot. And there's just connectors which you don't often see in these things. So I presume with this machine, because it's a washer dryer. There was a couple of different options that, you know, you could get it as a washer or a dryer and the, some of the parts would be shared. And so there's a few variations on how they look. But white wire is typically valuable because it has copper inside. metals go in the general scrap metal world. Copper is one of the more valuable ones. You can see this just takes a lot of time. You're watching it and that's fine. One of the other channels that I like to watch, and he doesn't do scrapping so much in terms of this kind of scrapping. He does more scrapping in terms of looking in dumpsters in Arkansas. I think he's Arkansas. In America is a guy called Vid Vulture. V-I-D Vulture used to be called Scrap Vulture, which I thought summed up a little bit better, but it also puts up videos of cats and other things like that that I'm not particularly interested in. But I do enjoy his videos where he goes around looking in dustbins and finding things. And he sells them directly as well, which I think is kind of kind of entrepreneurial. A lot of cable in this machine. A metal bracket that was holding on the floats with the pressure switch. Now instead of, instead of disconnecting that hose, I'm just going to cut it off. What are we left with here? More wire, screws, 
more clips. We're getting the bulk of the monotonous stuff out of the way quite quickly here, which is good from my point of view. There's a few more plugs in here. So I've been working on this machine just not for very long, but long enough to know that I'm not willing to spend any more time on it. And I want to get the three phase motor working and I'll have to do that in time in due course. So let's rock the machine onto its front. Oops. There we go. So this one's a big plastic base. Now that's in there. There's two pumps on this one. I think one for the tumble dryer and one for the machine pumping out. Loads more cable ties. Yeah, so I've got another AEG washing machine sitting behind me that I can't get to work. And it, it works, the motor turns, but the tumble dryer doesn't work. And so I'm gonna try and figure out what energy goes to the motor control circuit to tell it what to do and do that on that machine. And then maybe that will translate across to this machine. It's wishful thinking, but that's all I've got. motor off. There was another screw or two in the back as well but I had them off before. I don't know if I've checked the filter on this machine. I think I think I probably have. That's the belt off. That pulley's aluminium, that's worth saving. Saving for scrap I mean. motor is just going to fall down like that and here's this control board so let's uh, try and salvage as much cable as possible with it because we're stuck on something there I think that motor or something might go through the interlock. Let's set this aside. Down there. This is the element here. And that's the wires on the thermal sensor. Thermostat. driver on that. I'm not sure if we'll get the element out very easily here but sometimes they come out easy so typically I'll give it a go. Unscrew the nut, hammer it in, that releases the seal, hammer it in a little bit more then a screwdriver might pop it open. Of course it might not so let's see. Yeah I'll get it out. Sometimes these just refuse to come out. Pure, pure belligerent. There we go. Now it's out all right. That's the element. That could be recycled sometimes as stainless steel. Put it over there. Depends on your scrapyard. Okay. We've got some pumps in here. screw from underneath. And this is snaps out. And this is just a recirculating pump. So 
grab those clips and pull them away and pull off those connectors and then oh dear. twist is, gets it off so this is a very straightforward recirculating pump an Ascol pump it's the same as the pump that will have a filter on the front of it this one just doesn't have a filter it just has a straight through that's quite a handy little thing. They'll pump up to about a meter, maybe two meters with a lower flow rate. I'm gonna hang on to that. That's a kind of a come in handy there, really. Because you can just wire it straight up to a switch, a little float switch, and there actually is a float switch in here. This is all quite interesting. I think I might make my own little um my own my own little What am I trying to say? Some pump of some description here. If you can somehow waterproof that and put it into a waterproofing system, you could make your own little sump pump. There's the waste waste hose. It's a sticky piece of sellotape. I'm not sure what's holding this in. It seems to be just snapped in. There it is. It's got a little clip on it. There's the float switch, it just sits like that and when it rises up this little tab there activates the micro switch, pretty grim these things sit down the bottom for their life with all of the creepy crawlies and whatever else is down the bottom of your washing machine. So let's set that aside for future projects. I'm not sure what's holding these cables on, but uh, it seems to be good and fast. I'll cut this grey one and get the motor off. Get that out of my way. Okay. And, uh, some more little plugs. So we're really still just tidying around the edges here. There's a little sensor there, a little temperature sensor on, I wonder is that the tumble dryer or something? I don't really know. I've not seen that before, thermal sensor in there. Normally there's one beside the element, but, and there, and there was. I'm not sure what we're getting stuck on here. That's most of the cables out. It's just two. Could be the door interlock. But I know there's another pressure switch up there as well. Okay. That's what it is. That's what it is. Another pressure switch. So here, we can release these. These are the various hoses on the hose clamps going to the drum and the condensing thing. I think it's a condensing thing. And the tumble dryer. So that's just a little rubber hose that goes in in the waste. The metal can be recycled but the hose is just Rubber, another one down here. This is the sump going to the drain out pump. That's that loose. There's a bit of water coming out of there, which is typically gross. There's a pressure bottle adjacent to that down there. Then what are we up to? Waste waste hose and something here. More plastic. This is just a little cable and hose tidy. And the 
plastic, more clips, plugs. Interesting. Interesting or not, we'll go through everything at the end and you'll see how much, how many various bits you have here. Yeah, so the stainless elements thing is uh, it's, it's an odd one. Sometimes they want them, sometimes they don't, and I guess that goes. The price of stainless steel is low at the moment, along with aluminium. It's way down on about a year ago. The price of aluminium is about half what it was a year ago. So you're stuck with that. So I'm going to get down here. I think these clips somehow, I don't know how they work really, but this pump, this pump should just lift out somehow, but there's lots of water draining out into the back of it as well. Mm -hmm. See what I have to do. I'm actually just breaking the plastic clips off there because I can't see myself reusing this in its current guise. And I said that in the last video I made about this. A lot of these things were quite brittle. These plastic parts, so it should come out now. Right, a bar to help me along. screwed on oh you know what it's screwed onto the front of the machine or it's at least held in place on the front of the machine so I guess that's as far as I can go with that for now right get the tub out get this out off the here we might need a socket mm. yeah we need a big socket on this T45, it is, maybe even 50, you know, that's a big, 50, that's a big Torx. That's a big Torx screw. I do it. Put something in there. Try and keep yourself together and hope you don't break your tools. There we go. It's only the initial bit that's the hard bit. If you haven't got the right tools it can be hard. I'll see on this uh, screw here there's a bit of blue stuff which I presume is some kind of Loctite or something like that. Not blue stops it coming undone because this you know has a lot of it has a lot of uh, a lot of rattling acting through one screw right is this gonna come off I hope so what's it stuck on here It's not coming off. So the solution to that is put this back in a little bit. Then with this, I say it's a solution. I don't know if it is yet. No, it's pretty fast on there. 
that will come in later on we'll smash that off right okay back up on its front or, well on its legs again the water's gonna leak out all the mass is at the front of this machine there's a lot of water on the floor that'll be okay so what else can I take apart here? Wow, hard to know. Okay, in here, a couple of screws on the door interlock. Something's loose there, I can tell. The screws on the door are all torxes. there. I need a bigger one for up on top. door off and there's one last screw up in here in this hinge. I'm not entirely sure how that comes out. It's a fancy double hinge. Not sure how it comes out. Rubber door seal. That's it. It's off. It's just got a snap connector like that on it. And with the plastic. There's a lot of black kind of like clay coming out here. All right, then let's have a go at the door seal. Let's grab it and pull it all around. Yeah, look at that. It's like a bit of moss peat or something there. Like an ant's nest, maybe. Some leaves inside it. Wow. I don't know what it's for, but there's another screw here off. I think it's holding on something to do with the tumble dryer. Yeah, that's coming off now. Alright, it's all getting a bit flexible now. Okay, so there's the fan. That's useful if you want to make something Using the parts that we have, actually, that would be useful to make some kind of a vacuum pump or something like that. I'll set that aside. My box of keeping treasures. This, however, is just a manifold. Interesting, it's held on with a twist of wire, peeled off to the side. So down in here, a bit of twisted wire. Look at that. That's a piece of aluminium that can be recycled. We pull out this thermal gauge, thermal fuse, that's just aluminium, that can be recycled as aluminium. Pressure switch, bigger fancier one. Those go into the recirculating I think. I think that's all, oh, oh, there's some more here holding on. Mm -hmm. Can you see this? Right back here, there's a couple of screws on these hoses. Plastic hose clamps, you don't normally see that. You see plastic snap together ones, but not plastic ones with a self tapping screw. It's new to me. The one here. Now this tub luckily is splittable with a screwdriver. Luckily I say because it means I'll have to do it manually. Other ones I've taken apart with angle grinders. You just lick them all around the edge with 
an angle grinder. That gets you out. Uh, what's going on here? Soap drawer, what are, what's holding you on? It's got some snaps on the front of it. Soap drawer, big sprawly piece of a piece of plastic. Then the tub, the ballast, the door seal. Oh, get the door seal off like this. It's got a spring all around it. Get that off just by pulling on it. And the door seal it should just come off. Rubber. That's in pretty good condition actually compared to some of the ones I've seen on used machines. Concrete ballast is held on to torque screws. I wonder, no, that's probably easier to get it off later. This hinge now. No, it won't come out. Right, I just have to get the shock absorbers off below, I think. Oh, this plastic thing just snaps out. It's pretty gross inside, so if you're drying your clothes, that's where the water's going through. I suspect that's just going straight to the pump out, but I don't know. It looks, looks pretty gross. You can decide for yourself. So now I want to get these rubber, not rubber, plastic pegs out on the suspension. Is that I don't want to reuse them. I don't know what to do here. On the basis that I don't want to reuse them, I wonder can I cut them off? them they just just pop in they have a little tab on the end if you can poke that in they do come out a bit easier let's try if I can do that with this side oftentimes you can't you can't really figure out where it is so I've got my finger on it it's actually easier if you push that in with your finger that little tab there get the other two shocks off using the same method closes everywhere Tab in and we've come up a bit. There we are, just wrestling it up. Shocks should come out. Fully plastic. They're shock absorbers. They're kind of slow dampening. They're in pretty good nick. I'm not sure what I'd use them for. Other than on a washing machine. Last one, and then we're just onto the springs. Above. So it might be the simplest thing to remove those springs when the machine is like this. Say so might. Yeah, might. There's one out. Big old springs. And this one. Put the screwdriver down on top. 
lay the tabs. Two springs. Now then, we're at the tub stage with the ballast on the front. There's this metal piece up here as well, it can come off probably. It's got one screw holding it off, one screw here. Door interlock. Oh, this is interesting. So on the door interlock, it looks like we have a bit of brown staining. Maybe from overheating. Let's get in there. See what we can see. Plastic. How can we get in there? I'll have to go in there later on. I might make another video about that because we're getting quite long on this one. I'll come into that later on in another video. Just see what's in there. Maybe that's why this machine failed. So the last bit was down here trying to get this filter out. So is there any screws in here? I can't see any. Anyway. This fascia just pops out. There it is. This rubber hose doesn't want to pop out. So, I'm just going to cut it off. Now, what else is holding me up there? like to have a big crowbar handy. My floor is lovely and wet. Excellent. Big crowbar. That's all it needed. One of the things... Oh dear. I'm going to bring this outside. Yeah, that's that done. There was nothing in there. Nothing of interest in that filter. Sometimes there's pennies. Not today. So although the bottom is plastic, it will still go as metal because it will go in together with all the other bits. So just for this, well I don't know actually, no I'll take it off because it will fit easier. Moving. I take it off, and how does it come off? Some more, some more screws. I've got these adjustable feet that just screw out. That's them. I don't know what they're good for, but take them out anyway. I don't particularly want those adjustable feet, but I think it's better to take the metal off the plastic, even if it's a little bit of metal. All 
were big metal inserts there as well in the back. I don't know if you can see that, big metal inserts. And I'm sure they're threaded in or something. I don't know how you'd get them out. Okay. So this is just going to pop out now. I don't know if there's some more on the side. on this, this front, front metal. It's quite a good heavy gauge of steel that if it was useful for anything else. No though, it isn't. Right, we're nearly there. Now, to get my Torx bits back. front. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take these screws out, I'll take the screws out of the uh, circumference of the plastic and I'll magic myself back. You don't need to watch me doing that. Okay, so that was more work than I thought it would be. There was quite a few screws and they were quite well attached, but as soon as the last one came out it just fell open. That's what the screws look like there. They're pretty good coach screws, I might keep them for woodwork. Now back to this drum. Hopefully that'll be that. Might be. Feels loose anyways. Yeah, that's it off now, so it should all just fall apart. Should I say aluminium for recycling? That's one bit of plastic, quite heavy, a little bit dirty, but not the end of the world. It's a piece of metal there, which is the thing that I think it holds the element in place. So, turn this upside down again. Yeah, it should just come out. Not entirely sure why it's stuck. Almost out. There we go. There we go. Now, if you wanted a fire pit, you've got one. The next thing to do would be I'm not going to do it on this video. Take out these screws here. They're really hard to get out because they're stainless steel into what feels like pretty heavy cast aluminium. It's pretty good quality, that. And that goes as irony aluminium because you've got this big piece of steel in the middle. And the other thing to do is to bash out these paddles. See how easy that is. There's not really something clipping them in yet. Here it is. So this, these bits here, pop them out. and then just tap them sideways and then that's it do it again and again I don't want to do too much damage put a bit of a dent a little bit dent in it there. Three 
three paddles, more plastic. People think these are stainless. I don't think they are. Typically they are some kind of high chrome steel, which is not the same. Let's just see how easy these are gonna come out. Not at all. What I found mostly happens here is that these get wrung off. And, uh, they're not gonna come off at all. So if you get to that point, grind, angle grinder, or there isn't much else to do really, angle grinder or just keep going at them. Or the other thing is just prop it up on three bricks and accept the fact that it's got that nub on the end of it. And there's your washing machine fire pit after all that. So, without further ado, let's wrap up. I've had enough of this machine. This has been over an hour, I'd say. This has been over an hour, I would say. And yikes, plastic, big bucket, interesting bits, small bucket, plastic, metal, washing machine drum fire pit, plastic, plastic. You could drive the bearings out of that if you wanted. More hassle than it's worth. The concrete ring. I didn't show taking that off the plastic, but all I did was unscrew the screws and used a crowbar. You do need to get a bit of leverage in there. A little bit of wire, more plastic, some aluminium, stainless steel thing, and the pump is outside. Whew. If you got this far, check out my links below in the description to an affiliated Amazon shop for some of the tools that I use. Help, uh, help throw a few quid this way if you enjoyed it and you're going to buy stuff anyways. Don't buy it if you didn't want it. I'm not. Don't don't do that to yourself. And otherwise, leave a comment below and tell me how idiotic it is to waste your time doing this, or that you've been helped out. That'd be excellent. There's a weird pattern on that metal there. Thanks for watching. See you later.